basic model, Keras uh, convolutional binary classifier. Album covers that I scraped from Spotify. Uh, I wanted to write a like a genre classifier based on the artwork of an album. It turned out to be a pretty hard problem, so I tried to reduce it to a binary problem um, into either it's a metal album or it's not a metal album. Uh, because metal albums tend to be like pretty obviously metal. Um, you know, there's usually skulls and thrones and weird texts, so I figured that'd be like an easier classification problem. Anyway, I'd, I'd never got too far on it, but I've got this data set sitting around. If you're interested, let me know. They're all 300 by 300, um, yada, 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 and they're split up into test, train, and validate. I've also, good practice is to have a sample folder with just a small number of examples if you want to like quickly test that things work. Um, so that's all that is. And it's split up into um, their labels. So it's either metal or it's not metal. That's the problem. And so here's my, again, the model to do that. And I've got a train script here. Um, where I'm using a few like really useful Keras um, functions. So first I'm importing my model. Um, I've got this function to train it. This image data generator, I can, I can throw in some options on how to like pre-process the data. And I don't have to like write my own generator to fetch from uh, the directory. Because it's got this useful method flow from directory. I just give it a path. Um, what the size of my images are and what the classification mode is. And so it'll go into the path, it'll see two folders um, and treat those as the two classes. And then um, this will be a generator that I can then train on. But I basically can fit to that over that data using all these uh, nice Keras functions. So I've got my training script, I've got a model, I've got data. First thing I want to do before I do anything is make sure I've got um, an environment activated specific to this um, this project. That's going to become important when you uh, want to deploy because I want my environment to be uh, reproducible. So I'm going to use virtual env. I think that might be a bit out of date these days. I think vnv ships with Python now, or some people use condas to manage environments. So I'm just going to call it vnv. And it's going to create a folder in my directory called vnv. There it is. And it's going to host basically its own version of Python. And any new libraries I install will be um, installed there instead of globally. Um, that is, once I activate it. So you can see um, in the left here in my command line that I'm within that environment called vnv. So now if I do It's just going to install in whatever version of TensorFlow, probably the most recent, TensorFlow 2.0, just in that environment. So that avoids me like installing a, you know, TensorFlow 2.0 globally and then maybe wrecking um, other dependencies I have. So um, I'm just going to train the model and save it. Let's just save it. So, okay. Another red flag is I've got hard-coded paths. This is just because it's an example. So I'm just going to try and train this on my sample data um, just to make sure everything works. OK, I need PIL for some of the Keras backend stuff, which is useful for uh, image processing and things like that. So let's try training again. Oh, I need SciPy. Okay, so you see training the model, the um, that Keras data processor like looked in the folder, found four images, two classes. So that's nice. Um, and then I'm just training for like two epochs with a short amount of time. So we don't want to waste time on this part. Do we? Let's start setting up our Flask app. So in a new file, I'm going to call it app.py. 
that's kind of like the default convention for flask apps. Flask. First we, uh, so we initiate a flask object. Flask works by um, creating routes uh, as decorators of functions. So this is what it looks like. Let's do that. Oh my god, install Flask. Um, because I've named it app.py, so I should be able to just go Flask run. Flask by default will look for a, a file named app.py unless you specify an environment variable to tell it to look somewhere else. It's running on my local host here. So this is a sort of local URL port 5000. I can open that up. Okay, side note, you see how it says uh, environment production? Um, one thing you're going to want, especially when you're doing like development locally, is to like uh, have your changes like refresh the app. Every time I make a change, I want it to refresh. Um, and it won't do that if it's set to production mode. So I can change that by setting an environment variable called flask. So if I make a change, um, the server will restart. So super handy. So I don't have to actually manually restart it every time. So what I expect to happen is if I open up like my default route, I expect to see hello world123. Not for some reason. Um, it's printing out a log that it, it got a visit to um, to the route. Oh my goodness! Yes, it's a decorator. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so that should have changed everything, and now there we go. Hello world one two three. Okay. I can also, if I wanted to, like pass you know HTML. HTML and um, so it expects to return a tuple. The second argument is this sort of HTML status code. Um, so by default, Flask will return, I think, 200, and 200 means everything worked out okay. Um, but for, say, like bad requests and stuff, you might return like 404. Uh, actually, 404 I think is default for not found. 400 is bad requests, things like that. But more on that later. What we want to build is an API for our machine learning model. What we want is something like slash predict, where we can pass it, um, in this case, an image, and it'll return the prediction. Um, and so for methods like this, where you want to pass data to a server, um, you generally want to go with post. So I believe with um, with post requests, the data gets encrypted, um, performing some action on the other side, like some action with a side effect. Whereas get requests are typically just to receive or retrieve resources. So first of all, you'll notice that now if, if I try and call slash predict from the browser, method not allowed because um, from the browser, it's get requests, and I've specified this as just to accept post requests. When it comes to web development, um, it's all about sending requests and getting responses. A request is a special global-ish um, variable that will contain 
all the details of the request. Uh, and so I can access it in any of these functions. In this case, we're going to be looking for files. Um, the first thing, you always want to do some some basic validation on, on your input. So I'm going to assume that there's a file called, let's say, album in the request object. And if it's not, uh, I'm just going to say bad requests. get this working first day. So let me show you how I might test this. Okay, so you guys familiar with the curl uh, library? If not, it's a way to send requests from the command line. So um, my server is running at localhost 5000. There it is. But what I want to do is send a file. Get one of these. Copy full path. So curl album equals at. I think that's convention to say, hey, this is a path. So pass this as a file and to this URL. Okay, so it returned hello. That's good. Um, if I look at my server, um, it's printing out that file object. So looks like I'm able to at least send a file to my server. So that's a start. Now we want to make a prediction on it. Uh, I'm going to use some more uh, handy Keras functions. One called load model. So I save Keras. Um, Keras model as model.h5 and note again that I'm hard coding this and in a real production app I probably wouldn't hard code the path to the model. Another thing to note here is that I'm, I'm loading the model um, outside of any of the routes. Like this would be a very bad thing to do, right? Is to wait for the call and then to load the model. Because then, I mean, that's going to be a time consuming step and we don't want to reload this thing into memory every single time we hit a route. We want it sitting there already ready to go. Like the first thing we'll do is load the model. Run my app. I had this all working earlier today, I swear. Okay, so I don't know what's going on with this um, particular version. This will take some debugging of what what's going on with my dependencies. But luckily I did this um, earlier. Okay, here we are in an app.py, which should look very familiar. I've got my predict routes. I've got this sort of extra check um, that it is a post request. Checking for the file. Um, now I'm loading the image converting it to an array, and dividing it by 256 to normalize it. Something I probably also would want to like do some validation on before I do any other magic, but for another day. Right, then I'm calling model.predict, um, ensuring it's in the format it expects, and I'm just printing for sanity checks I'm returning a JSON object. So typically when you call an API, like JSON's the sort of de facto way to communicate. Uh, instead of just returning some random number, I know that um, if it's closer to one, then it's not metal, and if it's zero, it's metal. Um, if this was a well-trained model, which it's not. But I want to pass like a meaningful result back to the client. Ran, but 
I just want to make sure I'm in development mode. Okay, getting a shit ton of warnings, but it looks like nothing's breaking. Okay, yes. Uh, ignore this, I'll show you how I made that little template in a second. Okay, now let's let's try passing it to an image and see if it returns a prediction. Pass that again to localhost 5000. Again, that's, that's just sort of the default URL that Flask will deploy your server at. Curl doesn't like how I specified the file. I need to name the file. I'm just passing it a path. Good to go. Album. Method not allowed for this URL. Right. Because I want slash predict. <laughs> Yikes. Instead of banging my head against that, let's just move on. Assume that worked and I got a return. Um, let's see how I might call this from a client, uh, say from the browser. So another useful thing Flask has is um, this render template function. This is what you can use to like pass HTML templates with, say, specific uh, variables. A folder called templates in the same directory as the Flask app. So based on the name of that, you can you can call render template to to render that HTML template. So I'll show you what this one looks like headers, and a form where I can upload a file. So, like I said, I can also pass uh, variables to it. So, I should be able to see the name. Okay, see, um, it's showing Russell because I passed Russell to, uh, as a named parameter to the render template function. So, you can do things like um, add a route where you've got a variable name like this, and that'll be um, passed to the function. So I could do something like this and go, you know, Simon, and it'll render that based on the, the route. So anyway, that's all client-side Flask stuff, um, all in the documentation, but good to know. My index thing has a form. First off, I'm saying, okay, method post. So when a submit, when this form is submitted, there's a button here. And when it's, uh, because it's of type submit, when it's clicked, it will submit this form. And so that means it'll use the post, post method on the slash predict endpoint. Um, and this last thing is super important um, when I want to send images. So it's just, it's saying, okay, the encoding of this um, request will be a multi-part form data, which means I can specify a file. Oh, oh I just figured out what my problem was, guys. Um, this, this iteration was expecting a file named file, not album. Um, and so my no file found is actually coming from my endpoint uh, because there was no file called album. Let me try that curl request again. I forgot if this should work. Hey, something happened. Bad request. Key error file. Oh, yes. So that came from here. Um. Hey, so I got my JSON response, and apparently this met album is not metal. Hooray. Yeah, so I want to pass a file named album. Uh, and submit it to that endpoint. And now I should, basically the same thing I saw with that curl command, I should see now um, from the browser. Okay, let's try that one more time. Is it metal? There we go. Uh, it worked. And it's just, just the browser's displaying this JSON file. Uh, so that's the gist, that's Flask. And now, how can I get this deployed on Heroku? So how can I get this um, 
live where other people can, can use it. Uh, first thing I want to do is um, make this a Git repository that's uh, necessary for Heroku. Um, so in fact it already is. I've already got to get ignore, ignoring my virtual environment, um, PyCache, ignoring my folder of data. I don't want to commit that to version control. Um, I did make some changes that I'll just add some changes. Uh, just for a record, that's a bad git commit message, but it doesn't matter now. So there's a few things I need um, in order for Heroku to correctly deploy my Flask app. Uh, the first is I need to tell it what the requirements are. Like, what are all the extra Python packages it needs to install in order for this to run? Um, and so now, with my with my virtual environment active, I can use a command called pip freeze. Uh, dash L for local, so I only want to do the environment I'm in, not install all the global uh, packages I have. Um, and pipe that to a file called requirements.txt. So this is, this is pretty standard convention, and it's also um, Heroku expects, when deploying Python apps, a, uh, a file called requirements.txt that will list all the requirements. So I see that here. Uh, there's a whole bunch, I think, just because a lot of them are requirements from TensorFlow. One package that I haven't mentioned that is um, necessary is one called GUnicorn, server request handling library. Um, it lets you, like, your app receive like concurrent requests. Like, so multiple people can send requests to your app uh, at the same time without blocking each other. Um, but GUnicorn is also required um, in order to get a Flask app to run it on Heroku at all. For Heroku, I'm also passing it a runtime.txt, just saying, hey, use this Python version. And the last thing I need is a proc file. So this is basically the instructions for Heroku um, on how to initiate the app. So this is saying, this is Heroku specific, but use a web dyno. That means just use one of their hosting services that expects web requests, uh, and then run this command. So gunicorn, and the, this is saying, hey, run um, this module, so app, app.py, um, and this variable, um, which is going to be the app variable within it. Heroku, if you guys don't know, is like a platform as a service. A lot of the headaches that come from hosting an app, say on like AWS, um, Heroku will just abstract away. And they also have free tiers. Um, so you can deploy your, your server for free. Uh, the only thing is that like if it's not active, it will sleep. Um, so I've got a few like hobby apps here that are just asleep because no one's been sending the requests to them. Anyway, so Heroku, you can make an account, um, and you should get the CLI, because that's sort of the easiest way to deploy things. I'm going to call a command Heroku create, and the name, the name of the app that I want to give it. So let's say SMML Flask. OK, so I just created an app. Um, I should be able to see it now in my Heroku dashboard, SMML Flask 2. Um, but right now, like, I can try and open it, but there's nothing there yet. So I haven't actually pushed any code to it. I've just created it. So the way Heroku works is it creates a, um, a remote for your Git repository. Um, and basically, you can deploy by sending your code to that remote. So like, if, say if I do Git remote, I'll see origin, which is my just GitHub um, spot for this, but also Heroku. Heroku will by default deploy the master branch. So right now I'm on add model, git push Heroku. So I want to 
push this branch to Heroku. I think I can do, I want the master branch on the Heroku origin, but I just want to push add model to it. Push to, no, I think it's the other way around. So I want to push my add model branch to master. So now if that worked, we should see some output from Heroku that it's building the app. Python app detected. Now it should like install the dependencies and hopefully deploy without a hitch. Let's find out. Uh, look, so it looks like everything went great. Um, and it's deployed at this app. Here it is. Uh, let's see if it works. These are all not metal albums. I don't expect my classifier to be good anyway, but... Not metal! Really? 